You've talked about the history of the airfield <laughs> itself, and now we're sitting in the studio. How did your musical career begin? Well, my musical career uh, began when I went to London in 1971, at the age of 16. The previous autumn, I went and spent a few days with your mum, my sister, Diana, and your dad, Davy, just before you were born, up at Wastes Orchard near Oxford. And Davy was making it on the session scene and making a name for himself, and he encouraged me. So I gave it a go. I arrived in London. I had 80 pounds in my pocket that I'd earned on the farm. So my first day, took 60 of the 80 pounds <laughs> down Shaftesbury Avenue, where I bought my Yamaha FG300, which I still have, and started to do floor spots in folk clubs to try and get noticed. After about three weeks, my 20 quid was almost gone. <laughs> I saw this ad in the Evening Standard, Office Boy Wanted for Record Company. So I found myself in Savile Row, number three, outside Apple Records. My heroes, the Beatles. So I went up and I had an interview with a, a lovely, lovely girl. And at the end of the interview, she said, at the moment there isn't a job, but you'll be the first one. And I said, I don't know, but I haven't got any money. You don't understand. I'll do anything. I'll clean the door, anything. Anyway, she said, I'm sorry, there's no job. So the next day, I arrived really early and stood amongst the apple scruffs, the girls that always were outside the building, waiting for the lady that interviewed me to turn up. And when she did, I, I rushed up the steps after her and said, oh, do you remember me from yesterday? I, I, she said, come in. So she took me to the top of the building and said, you just sit there. And about five minutes later, she came back and she said, you've got a job. And I started there and then. This was a really interesting time. McCartney had left the band. Alan Klein had just become the Beatles manager. So the first jobs that I do in the day is make up the fires in the offices. And there would be the three of them talking to Alan Klein right there. I mean, it was, it was like something out of a, a bizarre film. It was a wonderful way to learn London because every day the phone would ring in the office boy's room, somebody needs to go and pick up a film from so-and-so or deliver something up to Ringo's house, get a lift back with the, uh, the chauffeur in the stretch limousine. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was like a fairy tale, really. 